learn about the general structure of fungi and reproductive spores produced by fungi. So before that we should know about some terminologies what and all we are using in study of fungi. So these are all the terminology, mycology, the study of fungi or science which deals with the study of fungi we call it as mycology, myco means fungi, logy study that is mycology, mycologist, scientist who perceives their studies about fungi we call it as mycologist, mycosis, disease causes by fungi we call it as mycosis, mycotoxicology, so majority of the fungi can able to produce highly poisonous toxic substances, so though toxins are called we call it as mycotoxins, so study of fungal toxins we call it as mycotoxicology. So now what are called fungi? So, a kingdom of multicellular eukaryotic organism we call it as fungi. So, majority of the fungi are unicellular, a typical example is yeast cell, so others are multicellular. So, a kingdom of multicellular eukaryotic organism we call it as fungi. So, why fungi are not kept under a kingdom plants? What differentiate fungi from plant structure? So, these are all the reason why we did not keep uh, fungi with plant structure. So, fungi they do not contain chlorophyll how plants like. Cell wall is not made up of cellulose like in fungi it is made up of chitin. No vascular tissues are reported in fungi. So, vascular tissues are nothing but xylem and phloem which is usually present in plant cell. So, but in uh, fungi no vascular tissues are reported do not photosynthesize. So, as I said there is no green pigment chlorophyll, so they do not able to photosynthesize. So, they are not autotroph because they cannot able to synthesize their own food because they all decomposes, they are saprophytic mode of nutrition. So, all are heterotrophs only, so they do not report as autotroph. So, these many reasons, so that is why fungi kept as a separate kingdom not kept under plant. So, what are all the characteristics of fungi? One can define this organism as fungi or not. So, these many characteristics one can define a fungi. So, they are heterotroph. So, many of the fungi are heterotrophs because I said a pigment chlorophyll is completely absent in fungi. So, that is why they cannot able to synthesize their own food. So, majority they all are heterotrophs. Fungi digest food and absorb it. So, they do not contain a pigment chlorophyll. So, they cannot ingest their food rather than it can able to digest the food material by its digestive enzyme and it can able to absorb the simplest molecule which is present in the substratum. Fungi are decomposes. So, fungi are best known for the decomposes because majority of the fungi are mode of nutrition is saprophytic. So, they can able to convert the complex organic substances which is present in the organic matter into simplest molecules. So, they are decomposes. Fungi are mostly single cell while others are multicellular. So, majority of the fungi are unicellular. Typical example is yeast cell which we all know others are multicellular. So, the entire body of the fungi is made up of hyphae. Hyphae is nothing but a minute fragment filaments like structure we call it as hyphae. So, whatever the ascomycotina fungi or bestomycotina fungi whatever the body of the fungi. So, the entire body is made up of hyphae. The interwoven of network of hyphae we call it the term mycelium. So, cell wall of fungi is completely made up of chitin it is not made up of cellulose that is why fungi is kept under a separate kingdom. So, fungal cells have nucleus as I said it is a eukaryotic organism. So, like other plants and animals how they have organelles and nucleus fungi also have the same. Fungi reproduces both by sexually as well as asexually during unfavorable condition it usually prefers vegetative kind of reproduction and also reported symbiotic association with plants and bacteria. The best known symbiotic association of bacteria sorry algae and fungi is lichen and they are also responsible for some parasitic disease in plants and animals. Some parasitic fungi they reported some diseases in plants as well as in animals. So, how do fungi grow? Usually fungi starts its uh, life cycle as a tiny germinating spore when the conditions are favorable like pH, temperature and other physical parameters. It produces a small protonema like structure. Protonema is nothing but small outgrowth like structure. This is also a hyphae. So, by continuous bombardment at the tip of the hyphae it produces branches and keep branching and finally, I already told the single fragment we call it as hyphae. The multi branching segments of hyphae we call it as my mycelium. This is how it start to grow from tiny spores during favorable condition and finally, keep on branching and it colonizes the entire reproductive structure as well as the vegetative structure. This is how the fungi start to grow from tiny spores during favorable conditions. 
So, next one this is how the growth happens after the germination of the spores. So, say for example, this is the hyphal wall tip. What happens here? I already told it is a eukaryotic organism, it has other organelles how plants and animals do. So, here the Golgi apparatus it produces vesicle. The main function of Golgi apparatus is sorting out of vesicles to inside organelles, so where the materials is needed. So, because of the vesicles which produces by the Golgi apparatus what happens say for example if a stretch a rubber band how it happens there is a growth towards the tip as well as there is a pressure in the side walls like that when a spore grow what happens the vesicle which are packed with different enzymes enzymes are nothing but proteins here what happens the enzymes which is usually filled with needed for the cell wall synthesis at the tip as well as if you stretch there is a stretch in the side wall. So, the vesicles which come from the Golgi apparatus packed with enzymes goes near the tip of the hyphae here it will burst with the cell wall and here this enzyme that is helpful for new cell wall synthesis at the tip of the hyphae like this and not only it fuses with the tip as well as in the side walls what happens if it stretch there is a stretchability pressure in the side walls. So, that also the enzymes which is carries by the vesicle by the Golgi apparatus also fuses with the side cell wall and it gives stretchability to the side wall. So, meanwhile it grows towards the tip this is how the fungal tip grow like this from the germinating spores. So, next one how fungi fare I already told fungi all are heterotroph because they cannot able to synthesize their own food because green pigment like plants it is completely absent. So, the digestion is by extracellular enzyme what happens I already told it is hyphae that is a single fragment like structure at the tip of the hyphae it produces highly digestive enzyme majority are heterotrophs what happens when the hyphal stand grows over the organic substrate that hyphal tips produces some digestive enzymes over the substratum what happens once it shed over the substratum this digestive enzyme degrades the complex organic substances into simpler substances once the simplest substances are made so that simplest molecules it is again back absorbed by the hyphae. So, this is how the mode of nutrition is saprophytic how it absorbs the material simplest molecules. So, this is by extracellular digestion by using digestive enzyme first it converts the complex organic substances into simplest one then the simplest molecules again back absorbed by the fungal tip that is why the mode of nutrition is saprophytic in fungi. So, this is how the structure of fungi. So, entire structure of fungi is made up of hyphae. The single fragment we call it as hyphae and the interwoven of hyphae we call it as mycelium. So, hyphae we have two types of hyphae one is septate hyphae and the one is aseptate hyphae. Septate means if you take one fragment if there is a cross wall compartment in between the cell we call it as septate hyphae. If you take one compartment the nucleus can be one or two uninucleate or binucleate condition in one compartment. If you take the aseptate hyphae another you can tell it as multinucleate condition without cross wall. So, that inside the lumen of the hyphae all the nucleus are freely suspended in the cytoplasm. So, that is why this condition is also called a xenocytic mycelium. Another one is mycelium again it is divided into two types one is vegetative mycelium another one is reproductive mycelium. Vegetative mycelium is nothing but if this mycelium anchorage and absorb food from the organic matter this is vegetative mycelium. During the favorable condition or unfavorable condition if it prefers for reproduction any one of the fragment of vegetative mycelium differentiate to produce as a spore structure that we call it as reproductive mycelium. So, mycelium can be two types vegetative as well as reproductive hyphae also two types septate hyphae as well as aseptate hyphae. So, this is the structure of hyphae and mycelium. So, this is the single fragment like structure we call it as hyphae interwoven of hyphae we call it as mycelium. So, because of this interwoven of mycelium only the entire body of the fungi is made up of. So, this is septate hyphae here you can able to see the cross walls ok. So, one one compartment you can see either one nucleus or binucleate condition. So, this is the aseptate hyphae here there is no cross wall. So, nucleus inside the lumen is freely suspended in the cytoplasm there is no cross wall this is septate hyphae this is aseptate hyphae that is hyphae this is interwoven of hyphae we call it as mycelium. So, this is how it look like septate hyphae aseptate hyphae otherwise you can say it as xenocytic hyphae you can able to see the cross wall. So, inside the cross wall here it is given only one, one nucleus it can be binucleate condition also here nucleus are freely suspended because there is no cross wall and septate hyphae it is again divided into two types simple pore septum and dolipore septum. Simple pore septum if you see means there is 
a in connection between one septa with the other one there is a simple pore for the connectivity from one compartment of to other compartment in dolipore septum this incomplete septa is surrounded by barrel shaped sheath so this is called dolipore septum so this dolipore septum usually is seen in basidiomycotina fungi that is a higher fungi so this is seen only in basidiomycotina fungi so septate hyphae it is divided into simple pore simple incomplete septae the connectivity is very simple in dolipore septum the septae incomplete septae is surrounded by barrel shaped sheath so this sheath also surrounded by pore cap we call it as paranthosome so this pore cap is made up of minute pores so from this minute pore one compartment can connect with other compartment in the hyphae so these are all the hyphal modification since it is a heterotrophic mode of nutrition it has to digest many substratum which it colonizes so based on the substratum how it uh, converts the complex organic substances into simpler substance so these many hyphal modifications are seen in fungi so first one is prosenchyma a finger thumb print like structure we call it as prosenchyma structure and pseudo parenchyma it is parenchyma it is like structure not true parenchyma so that's why it is given pseudo parenchyma it is like structure the next one is rhizomorph rhizoids like structure we call it as rhizomorph so based on the substratum which it colonizes to derive its nutrients the hyphal modification is seen sclerotia this is a thick stalk like structure we call it as sclerotia and another one is apressorium and hostorium in case of parasitic fungi what happen when the parasite when the parasitic spore fungal spore come contact with the any plant cell or animal cell what happened the spore first germinate it produce a knife like structure that we call it as peg like structure so this peg like structure the initial infection we call it as apressorium okay once the successful colonization it is present in the parasitic fungi what happen to colonize further it produces finger like projection it can be intracellular or intercellular intracellular means inside the cell intercellular means in between the cells to further colonize if it produces a balloon like structure or finger like projection we call it as hostoria then stoma this is a thick stalk like structure we call it as stoma and another one is hyphal traps this is also reported in parasitic fungi to trap the movement of other parasites this is hyphal traps so these many hyphal modifications are seen in fungi in mode of both saprophytic mode as well as in parasitic mode so this is how the structure of fungi is defined so cell wall is there i already told it is made up of chitin not cellulose and these are all the vesicles that sort out from golgi apparatus it is filled with the enzymes for the growth of the fungal tip and uh, since it is a eukaryotic organism it has endoplasmic reticulum ribosome mitochondria golgi bodies how it is defined in plants and animals so the structure also here but the cell wall is made up of chitin not cellulose here and it has a crystal body where it poisonous toxins of stored so coming to spores in fungi fungi usually reproduces by spores so reproduction it can be done in three ways vegetative reproduction by vegetative spores asexual reproduction by asexual spores sexual reproduction by sexual spores so vegetative reproduction it is usually done by chlamydospores chlamydospores are nothing but during unfavorable condition if the conditions are not favorable it cannot choose sexual reproduction as well as asexual reproduction so by the time what it does is the vegetative mycelium differentiate one one compartment into highly resistant spore it bulges it accumulates some protoplast with some nucleus it bulges and the wall secrete around the chlamydospore will be very thick because i said it is formed during unfavorable condition to resist the unfavorable condition it has to survive for that it is surrounded by a thick layer during favorable condition it detaches from the vegetative mycelium and it germinate to form the protonema like structure and finally it produces the entire structure so these are all the chlamydospores forms during unfavorable condition by the mode of vegetative so coming to asexual spores in fungi fungi usually produces by asexual mode of reproduction here asexual means absence of sexual mating of plus and minus so that's why it is given asexual spores in fungi so fungi spores formed by asexual mode of reproduction they are not resistant to unfavorable condition but they can capable of rapid multiplication okay then other one is they may be one or many cell can be uninucleate or multinucleate in condition so these are all the two spores sporangiospores as well as the 
aplanospores. Sporangiospores and aplanospores, the formation is same, but here sporangiospores are motile, aplanospores are non-motile. What happens? I told two types of mycelium vegetative mycelium as well as reproductive mycelium during the mode of asexual reproduction any one of the vegetative mycelium differentiate to produce a stalk like structure. So, here the protoplasm and other nucleus will enter into it at the tip there is a continuous bombardment of protoplasm. So, it produces a vesicle like structure we call it as sporangium sporangio 4 p h o r e sporangio 4 sporangium and inside spores we call it as sporangio spores ok and here with this vesicle it bulks. So, inside it is multinucleate in condition it is keep on dividing by meiotic division that is why it is given capable of rapid multiplication ok. If the pressure exert in the balloon what happens the balloon bursts that means the vesicle the sporangium breaks and it disperses the sporangiospores which are motile in condition. So, that is why sporangiospores are motile aplanospores are non-motile the production of aplanospores is same, but the spores releases by the sporangium is non-motile. So, asexual mode of reproduction it can able to produce this by sporangiospores and aplanospores. These spores are endogenous, endogenous means from inside the hyphae it produces when the pressure exits it expels outside. So, coming to endogenous, so this is also asexual mode of reproduction. The previous one what we saw is exo sorry endogenous spores, sporangiospores and aplanospores. So, this is exogenous, exogenous means spores produce outside the hyphae that is just like budding of yeast how it is. So, this is conidia and oidia say what happens any one of the vegetative mycelium differentiate to be the reproductive mycelium producer sporangiophore and here there is no vesicle like structure it simply buds of the spores outside that is why it is called exogenous spore it is given bond externally over the sporangiophore. So, these are all the two spores conidia as well as oidia forms during favorable condition or else unfavorable condition. So, conidia this may be uni or multicellular one nucleus or many nucleus. So, this is oidia barrel shaped or rectangular shape produces asexually singly you can say or else in the form of chains. So, this is also only single or else in the form of chain how you observed in aspergillus penicillium and all chains of exogenous spores. So, these are all the asexual spores exogenous as well as endogenous. So, coming to at last the sexual spore produces by fungi. So, these many pro spores fungi produces by sexual reproduction that means mating of plus and minus hyphae O spores usually reported in O mycets that is a primitive fungi. So, here mating of anthridium as well as ogonium here why we call it as ogonium because sex organ of female sex organ is bigger in size compared to the male sex organ. So, once the mating happen what happens the ogonium produces O spore. So, this is reported in O mycets. The next one is zygomyces produces zygospores. So, this is that mating of plus and minus hyphae, plasmogamy, karyogamy, then finally resultant is the zygote, we call it as zygospore. So, this is produces in zygomycotina, that is why the spore produces by mating, we call it as zygospore. And here, ascospores produces in the sac like structure, ascus. Anthridium as well as ascogonium meet each other, then it produces a structure called ascospore. Usually, two meiotic division happens. First meiotic division result in four spores, second meiotic division result in eight spores. So, finally, again, when the spore matured inside a ascus, the pressure exert and it releases the ascospore, predominantly found in ascomycotina fungi. So, that is why it is called ascospores. So, based on the spore produces in each division, the name is given. So, this is basidiomycetes fungi produces basidiospore. So, here there is no mating of male and female here the dicaryotic mycelium produce a barrel shape structure or club shape structure we call it as basidium. So, inside it undergo division and produces four basidiospores. So, these are all the four basidiospores. Basidiospores are produced at the tip of the sterigmator that is a sterile structure which bears the basidiospores. Okay, here a special kind of mode of dispersal of spore that we call it as Buller's drop. What happens at the tip of the sterigmator it bears a water sugary fluid. So, by the time the spore also will mature at the tip of the sterigmator once the sugary fluid burst that will disperse the spores. So, I hope you understand the general structure of fungi as well as the reproductive spores in fungi. Thank you.